Welcome back to the special program of the Near Today. I'm joined here by U.S. Chairman, Joint Chief of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, and Ambassador to Pakistan, Ms. Ann Patterson, and we're discussing the implications and effects of, of President Obama's new strategic plan for Afghanistan on Pakistan. Is there a trust issue in the sense that, you know, if, if actionable intelligence is being provided, then why do we uh, keep on hearing the leaks about the drone attacks in Pakistan Foreign Office clarifying nothing, I mean, not to talk of anybody else, but Pakistan Foreign Office spokesperson clarifying, no, drone attacks will take place. It has been clarified. Pakistan's position is pretty clear and things like so. There is talk of drone attacks in Quetta. Well, sir, I mean, certainly there have been plenty of stories in the media about it, and I understand that. And, and the, again, I'm not going to go into any specific uh, details of operations here. The only thing I can uh, tell you is that uh, our intelligence agency, the United States intelligence agencies, the uh, ISI here, the Pakistani intelligence agencies, work hard to share intelligence all the time. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Uh, with uh, any country uh, that I'm familiar with around the world with respect to the United States. It's something we work very hard at, but there have been an extraordinary number of successes tied to the kinds of uh, information and intelligence sharing uh, that really makes a difference. You know, <clears throat> why this question becomes important and very sensitive um, emotional kind of issue in Pakistan is that whenever the U.S. decision makers, important key people, come to Pakistan and stand with the Pakistanis, they appreciate the cooperation and the intelligence sharing. But when people go back and they talk to the U.S. media, they often, like for instance in May when you were giving the uh, the Foreign, Senate Foreign Relations Committee, you were actually giving a testimony. And also when I think you were speaking to John Rushing, uh, in a program. You said that the ISI, I think your words were that the ISI in the long run uh, will have to learn not to uh, foment chaos across the frontiers, right? Well, one of the, you asked earlier about the, uh, the strategy. One of the things that I believe uh, is very important is that President uh, Obama and NATO's, you know, there are 43 nations with countries, uh, 43 countries with uh, <coughs> combat forces in Afghanistan, that that a stable Afghanistan has, will certainly uh, um, impact on how Pakistan looks at its future. Uh, and uh, I'm convinced that uh, a stable uh, uh, Afghanistan that is uh, not in any way, shape, or form uh, disruptive or chaotic with respect to uh, Pakistan, has, uh, there's great potential there for uh, a Pakistan to look to uh, a much more stable future as well. And in that, I think we all get to a point where we look at uh, do the things that we can are the things that we have done the things that in the past should we be doing that in the future uh, and that uh, I apply to many organizations not least of which is the intelligence organization. But you know why I say this because you know I used to remember that um, about Yasser Arafat the U.S. media and, and people used to say that you know he has a double diplomatic double speak when he speaks to the Americans he in English he says one thing when he speaks to the Palestinians in Arabic he says the other thing so what people are worried that you know uh, within the Pakistan the U.S. decision makers say well they're getting cooperation from the military and from the inter-services intelligence but the but the, the leaks that take place in U.S. actually point out that the ISI is not cooperating ISI is rogue and um, as I need to curb its, uh, its destabilizing or, cha or chaos producing activities across the frontier in the region, right? Well, well I, I mean, I, I'll say it here tonight. I've said it in the United States. There's a great deal of cooperation. Uh, and there are areas that we need to improve <coughs> on, uh, uh, on both sides in that regard. So uh, again, and it's, a, and it's a growing relationship. It goes back to uh, the trust deficit that I spoke to earlier. And we're building that back up. That's uh, we were absent for uh, a dozen years. That's not going to return overnight. And we're working hard to make sure that, you know, we come closer and closer together over time. So one, one quick question regarding Afghanistan, right? Um, how one of, the, one, of the, one of the important shift that has taken place between March, the Obama strategy, the President Obama strategy vision of March and December is, the focus has shifted away from Al-Qaeda to Taliban. Why it has and what's the implication? Actually, the main goal of the strategy in March, and it was re-emphasized uh, in this strategy, uh, <coughs> is, to, uh, is, is on Al-Qaeda and essentially to eliminate those safe havens uh, and then create uh, here, uh, safe havens here, uh, in Pakistan and to, uh, in fact, uh, make sure that the Taliban don't uh, take over Afghanistan again and those safe havens could return there. And that is the main goal and it's, it's tied both to Al-Qaeda and the Taliban and actually other terrorist organizations. What 
what we've seen is uh, that this region is the epicenter of terrorism, quite frankly, not just in the region, but uh, you know, globally. And we see these, tour I see these terrorist organizations uh, have become much more collaborative. Uh, they're much uh, more, <coughs> they, they exchange information. Uh, they're never going to be great friends, but they're much closer to each other than they were even a year ago. And it's really, that's the focus. But the of disadvantage of targeting Taliban is that you open a very large front and you also move Taliban and Al-Qaeda more closely together. You force them to be more closely embedded with each other. Well, I think they are very closely embedded uh, in many cases. Um, and, and part of this strategy over time uh, is to protect, I mean, particularly in Afghanistan, uh, is the potential, you know, reintegration or reconciliation uh, for the Taliban. Um, uh, and, and we'll see. I believe that the 30,000 troops, the additional forces, will be uh, uh, enough to reverse the momentum uh, of the Taliban in Afghanistan, and that those, in fact, uh, and part of that, I think part of the strategy will be uh, who, will, uh, who will lay down their arms, quite frankly, and security has to be there in order to do that. One quick question regarding the Afghan National Army. One of the aspirations or the ambition is to train 240,000 Afghan National Army in the next 18 months. How realistic is this? Um, the, the, a critical part of this strategy is to develop both the Army and the police. Uh, and we have a, a goal uh, of, uh, I think it's 100 and, uh, or 240,000 total by the end of next year against, uh, you know, we already have uh, some 180,000 that are there. We recognize that this is an aggressive goal, but it's absolutely critical uh, that we achieve it. Uh, and there's a great deal of effort. Uh, I just came from Afghanistan. Um, there's a significant change in the strategy there in terms of partnering uh, with the Afghan security forces and specifically with the Army. There's a, um, and there's, a, there's an integration and a capability that uh, actually I saw two days ago that I hadn't seen the last time I was here six months ago. So we know it's an aggressive goal. In the end, that's what, this is what has to happen. The Afghan security <coughs> forces have to take over and provide for their own security. I know you're so hard-pressed. You have to meet the president. But just one question about the presidency in the center, the last question, that um, right as we speak, the Supreme Court is deliberating on a decision on a case, a um, very popular case in Pakistan, that might affect the presidency. Are you concerned? Certainly, uh, watching it, uh, uh, we're, uh, the outcome of that, though, is a, an issue for uh, the Pakistan, uh, Pakistan people and the Pakistan government and the Pakistan democracy. And certainly, uh, uh, we, we, uh, uh, in, in whatever the decision is, uh, I'm sure that uh, it, it will be, you know, it's democratically uh, reported. Um, and uh, and, and uh, other than that, uh, uh, there's not. I, I really don't have a whole lot more to say with respect to. Is the State Department about it? No, I would. That's we we support. It's a decision for Pakistan's parliament and judiciary and executive branch, and uh, Pakistani institutions will have to decide how to how to go forward on this. Ambassador Patterson, Admiral Nolan, thank you. I wonder we can shake hands across this table. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> thank you, Doctor Prasad. Thank you. Thank you.